Well, good morning, everybody. It's Danny Wanda back from uh, Deep South Homestead. We're over at Pecan Grove, and as promised, we're going to show you what we're doing with our tubs. Now, I have different size tubs. We showed you the mineral tubs, but now we're going to be planting some carrots in one, and this is a 65-gallon tub here, and I have several of these. They come from landscape companies. If you know a guy who plants trees for landscape companies, lots of times they just give you these pots, and and the, the guy that I get mine from, he don't want them, so he just gives them to me. And this thing has a series of holes in the bottom of it that's used on a nursery. But when you're growing your vegetables in it, you don't want your water going out the bottom. You want to be able to create it. So I've cut a piece of greenhouse plastic I have here. And I'll take this. I'm going to fold it down in here. Like so. I try to even it out around it where I've got about the same amount of distance on the sides because these landscape tubs they slap these hooks into the side of them they're full of holes all the way around them so I don't worry too much about them holding too much water because the water will get out of them and I'll take my plastic and I kind of just like make sure it's up you know I don't get too fancy with it I'll leave it kind of like that right there then I'll take and uh, I've got some red sand here our property here we found a place that has a lot of red sand on it I went and scooped up some and I'll take this red sand and I'll kind of throw it around the edges that'll that'll hold that plastic in place we've done this for, for years over at Deep South Homestead in our pots over there because we have a lot of sand over there and we were kind of hoping we could find a place over here and we did. It had some sand. And we're going to just take and we're going to work our way around the pot. And as you do, fold the plastic up. Okay, once you get your dirt kind of, you know, around here like this, you can trim your plastic. I mean, I... We don't have any scissors here, and my knife is really dull right now. So we're going to try to. Uh, I've been cutting. I've been cutting some uh, tar stuff with this. And it's not really that sharp anymore, but you can cut it around and get it out. Now this is this will give us about uh, I'll say six inches of. Uh, of water retention in the bottom here this is a really big tub now I normally wouldn't go quite this high on a small tub I wouldn't but this tub is really large for growing carrots you really do want as big a tub as you can get because you don't want your carrots just all bunched right together Okay, guys, these are corn cobs from the Danny corn that has been in the chicken pen. We're going to take them and we're going to along with a few feathers and stuff like that. We're going to put a few of them in the bottom here. Now these are our nitrogen sticks because they've been rolling around in chicken manure and all that kind of stuff. And plus, they're going to become an actual sponge to help retain water. Now that's what it kind of is going to look like there. Okay, as y'all know, we have several other pots we're putting here to raise a few vegetables in. And we're these we don't have to have the plastic in because these are solid in the bottom. As a matter of fact, we actually uh, we actually drill holes in them like this, the quarter inch holes, four inches up from the bottom, three or four of them around it, so that the water can drain out of them. So we're going to use basically the same exact process that we used on the big one. We're going to do this one the same way. We've got the red sand. We're just going to come in here. And we're going to put it in the bottom of all of these because... The sand will not get hard. It'll just it'll just hold water and it stays damp a long, long time. So that's what we're gonna do to each one of these pots. 
we're just going to go along now and we're going to fill them up with the red sand. All right, now that we have all of the uh, mineral tubs with our red sand in the bottom of them, you know, we're going to do just like we started on the big tub. We're going to put a few corn cobs. We're going to even out what we've got here in all of them. It doesn't take a lot of them. You know, they decompose over a year. I'll kind of like divide this up amongst all of them. I'm trying to make sure I get some in all of them. has about took that whole mound over. Get that off of there. Okay guys, as I've been clearing on the property, I pile my topsoil in certain places when I'm building roads and stuff like that uh, and we use it just for this purpose and uh, some of the grass has rotted in it but then we have some of it that's still you know still green we'll get that out of there uh, we that we took all the old morning glories off of it when we got ready to uh, take it up but a lot of it has done rotted the grass has rotted like that there that's just rotten grass and it's been so dry here now, this is not any moisture in it at all. It's it's just dry. You know, and it's just grass roots. And we're going to take that and I'm going to spread it down in there. We're trying to get some good topsoil mixed in with this. We can't, I mean, we proved that we could plant in pure manure. But we want to try to get some some microbes and all that kind of stuff in here. So I've got some uh, vermiculite. Uh, we're going to add some vermiculite into this big tub here because this one will be carrots. Vermiculite doesn't actually keep the soil from getting hard and packy. It helps it to remain, uh, retain moisture. Uh, if you want to keep it from getting hard and packy, you have to have perlite. Now this is vermiculite, and I'm going to turn it in to this just a little bit here, so that we have some moisture retaining ability in this topsoil, so that it doesn't dry out as much. Now the topsoil is very dry right now, so there's uh, no moisture in it whatsoever. But when we do add the moisture, and I will say this, it's going to take a lot of moisture to do this. This is our 30 year old cow manure I scooped out of the old barn. No telling us what we're going to find in it. Yes, it'll have some hard clumps in it because, because see, like, that's a, looks like a piece of old tar paper or shingle or something other that was under the old barn in there. 
and there is a piece of blue glass. I definitely don't want that in there because I'll be running my hands down through that. So I'm gonna have to take time. There's another piece of something. I'm gonna have to take my time and look through it. Now there's gonna be some soil mixed in with this uh, cow manure because when I scooped out of the barn, I'm, uh, I took out some of the soil with it. So there'll be a mixture. Also, we dug through some layers of, uh, with the tractor, of lime. The elderly man had limed every so often. He would cover the barn floor with lime to, uh, to keep down some sort of problems, I'm guessing. We found that quite often as we were digging out the uh, manure. Okay, guys, we're going to put some organic, uh, this is natural blood meal. It's an organic source of nitrogen. It's called Earth Science, uh, eco-friendly. And y'all know I've told you up front that when you use organic material like this, you're only going to get about 8% of it up front. It's not made for planting your plants in for immediate uh, use. I'm going to be adding it to all these pots because down the road, they're going to need some nitrogen. Now we put the uh, corn cobs in the bottom with the chicken manure on them, which is nitrogen. But the roots won't reach that deep for quite some time. It will live on this 8% that this is going to produce. Plus, as it breaks down over the next four months, because it'll take it about four months to break down in the soil where the plant can actually use it. By then... These carrots will really need it to get their root system going, to get the big carrots and stuff. So we're going to put the bone meal in this, I mean blood meal in this. And all of our pots down through, I'm going to add some just as a extra nutrition for our plants to help them kind of get a little bit of go in there. Not, you don't have to have the earth science, you know, variety. That's just some that I bought this past year because I got a good deal on it. And, uh, and another thing, the reason we're doing it like this is because this, it'll take four months for this stuff to break down where it's really usable. And, uh, that'll put us into next spring. And when we go to plant our crops in this next spring, we'll already have some good sources of organic nitrogen in here. Uh, to be using. That's another reason we're doing it now as opposed, you want to amend your soil in the fall. You don't want to really be doing this right at the time of planting in the spring. Even though our plants will get some benefit from it this fall, we also have these tubs of rabbit manure that we've had in our barn for the last six months. We save it from our rabbits. Uh, now this is a cold fertilized. It's not going to hurt anything. We're going to take it and we're going to sprinkle a little bit around on top of our pots. Okay, guys, we've got the rabbit manure now in all of our pots down through here. And if I have a question about anything, it's the rabbit manure because there, I do occasionally buy about every three months, I'll buy a bag of rabbit feed to feed my rabbits and uh, to supplement them. And, you know, I don't know if there's anything in that feed or not. So I guess this will be the ultimate test to find out whether it is or not. But what we're going to go do now 
we're going to go back and we're going to put the Schultz potting mix. Now this is the uh, nine month feeding uh, type. It has time release fertilizer in it. Uh, it's for indoor outdoor plants. I've used this for years. I have never had any problem with it. Uh, now you don't have to use this brand if you have a brand that you prefer. It's just that this is our way of doing things. We've had very good success with this and we're going to fill the tops of all the pots now with the Schultz and then we will actually turn it all together in the pot. Now there is some vermiculite in with the Schultz. For those of you who saw me uh, mix the vermiculite in earlier, there's a little bit in the Schultz, but there's also a lot of perlite in here. And the perlite, that's the reason I didn't mix any in with the tubs when I was going, because I'm going to have it in the Schultz potting mix, so there's no need in doing it twice. It's just that because our climate is so hot and so dry here, I added some extra vermiculite so that when we water it, it retains moisture a little bit better. You can notice when I hold it up, you see these little green things like this right here? That is the uh, time release fertilizer that's in it. So it's, it is in there with it. We've got the uh, Schultz on the top. Now comes the point of we've got to actually flip all this stuff and mix it all together. The cow manure, the rabbit manure, the vermiculite, the perlite, the Schultz potting mix. All this stuff is to be amended together except the bottom. Don't dig down into the red sand that you put down there. Leave that as it is uh, there's a way you can dig this and that shorts will it'll just fall down in around the edges and then it's going to take some doing so you can't get in a big hurry with it Because these pots and this soil is so dry, the watering process will probably take an hour or so. Uh, you can't just sit here and flood it with water because what it'll do is it'll just run out the holes in the pot. You have to water it, let the soil absorb some water. Water it, let the soil absorb some water. You gotta do it like five times before you actually get it enough that it's saturated. Because the water up here is going to gradually drain to the bottom, and the bottom will hold a lot of water, so you don't have to worry about overwatering them. And the tubs look like they're really full right now, but in about a week, they'll be down considerably. All right, we've got the, uh, it's been, been a while now, but we've got the pots all, uh, watered in i dug deep down in here the water has made it to the bottom because when you plant carrots you're not going to come back and be watering them until they actually begin to grow so you have to water it deep enough that it stays wet now we're going to be planting the corota carrots uh these actually are native to hawaii uh these called the new corota now uh this come from Kitazawa Seed Company because that's the only place we can buy them in large quantities like this. And we love carrots and we eat a lot of carrots. Or I do anyway, I eat a lot of carrots. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna 
I'm not gonna put a lot of seeds in this because it doesn't take a lot. Now the wind has started blowing and I'm gonna have to be really careful. But I do want enough of these that I can thin them out a little bit and uh, and be able to uh, have some to go in some salads or whatever, or just to stir fry. We like the little bitty ones in stir fry. Carrots need to be thinned. Now carrot seeds are not viable for many, many years like other seeds are. So we do have some older ones we're gonna plant in other places, but right now I'm just trying to get a fairly decent stand of these. Okay, we've got these planted now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this. Guys, I've got tons of videos online at Deep South Homestead. You can just type in Deep South Homestead carrots and carrot planting. And I have, I show we're planting them in rows and taking a little round thing with a seed dispenser and putting them out evenly. And I show broadcasting them in different ways of planting them. I also have a carrot manual that I have wrote that's on our Etsy store at deepsouthhomestead.etsy.com that shows every step of the process of growing carrots and how you can do it successfully because a lot of people have a lot of trouble raising carrots and it really it's really simple it's not hard at all if you follow the rules for growing carrots now now that I have the seeds in here what I'm going to do is take some Schultz potting soil and I'm going to lightly sprinkle it over the top of it now you don't want it heavy I'm going to just lightly do it maybe an eighth of an inch deep and you want it to stay loose you do not want it to be packy because if it gets packy the little carrot seeds cannot push their way through the, uh, the crust. That's one where a lot of people make their mistakes with carrot seeds is that they they try to come back and they try to water them real heavy afterwards and I don't uh, advocate watering real heavy afterwards. It's okay to water. Don't get me wrong now. It's okay to water because water is going to be your friend before this is over with. But what I'm showing you here is a container technique. That usually does fairly well. I use the back of a rake because the secret to seed germination is soil seed contact. And I'll take the back of this rake and I just kind of lightly tamp it like this. To make good soil contact. Okay. We've got good seed soil contact now. And I'm not tamping hard. I'm just letting the weight of the rake just lightly touch the soil. We're going to take the water. And you don't want it. You want it just on shower. You don't want to spray a hard stream on this when you do it. You just want it on shower. And I'm just turning it on lightly. Letting it just barely run. Because I'm making sure I have the top of this soil damp. Really damp. You don't want water standing. But you want it to be damp. Alright. We've got this watered now. And you know, you want to. what you want to do is you want to block out the sun's ability to dry this soil out. Because seeds don't need the sun really to germinate. These carrot seeds don't. They can be in the dark. Now what I do is, this is, I, I've... One of my companies that I own uh, gets in lots of metal and stuff like that over the years. And I save this because this is what comes the metal comes covered in. You can use anything. You can use plastic. Now, not clear plastic. It's got to be black plastic. But you need something that the sunlight doesn't penetrate. Uh, you can use lumber, plywood, anything like that to put on it. Now, I'll come back in a little while and I'll put some boards on top of this to kind of across the pot to keep this, not on top of this, but across the pot to actually keep this from blowing out from under here. And uh, in about, I'm gonna save somewhere around five days, I'm gonna start coming out here, picking the edge up on it, looking at it, to see if I see the little 
forked tops coming up because carrot comes up in a little forked top and if I see that beginning to happen then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull the top off of it and I'll take the garden hose and I'll put it on the misting side and I will lightly mist that soil all during the day to make sure that it doesn't dry out because that's your key once they start sprouting is to make sure the soil does not dry out at all. You want to keep it damp and keep it moist. That is the secret to growing your carrots and getting a good start with them. Miss Wanda has problems growing radishes. So, uh, and she has taped the fool out of this one uh, to make sure the seeds don't come out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these pots and we're going to actually see how radishes do in them. Uh, we're going to see if they will actually grow in our mixture that we have set up for the carrots and other stuff. Because Miss Wanda loves her some radishes. Now this is the French breakfast radish. It's more of a longer uh, cylindrical type radish with a white bottom on it. I've never actually grown these myself, Ms. Wanda has. These come from high mowing organic seeds. But I'm going to take these radishes and I'm going to try to get them going around in this pot here. Now the secret to radishes is don't get them too thick. When they start coming up, you got to thin them out. And that's one thing Ms. Wanda has a problem with is thinning stuff out. Because she thinks that she's getting rid of some good stuff when actually that's the only way you're going to have good stuff so i'm going to sit here and try to take these and we'll try to i'm going to try to sprinkle them around in here there's enough here to plant two of these pots i can see that already we're going to try to do it all in one we'll thin them out because actually i don't know how old these are We're going to bring our Schultz over here. And we're going to start. And don't worry about these pots being so full because I guarantee you, by the time spring gets here, these pots will be way down. Got about a quarter of an inch of uh, the pot and soil on top of it now. And we're going to go for the soil seed contact. We're going to wet them in. You don't want it to dry out, so you're going to have to come out periodically during the day and check it. If it starts looking like it's trying to dry out, that's why you see it is 9.30 in the morning. We're still in the shade. Uh, the shade is your friend now. It used to wasn't, but it is now. You actually, because it's radishes, radishes are very fast growing. And anytime you have a very fast growing seed, there's no need to cover it. But now things like your carrots that are very tiny growing seeds... Uh, they really need to be covered. Uh, also, I want to mention to y'all, we're going to be doing electroculture throughout the fall and winter also. Now we have Mr. Mickey's uh, coils that he made. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be sticking this uh, right in the center uh, of the pot because these pots are not really that big. I mean, it, it'll reach the whole radius of this pot without any problem. So we're going to stick this right in the center of the pot to be drawing in uh, our electromagnetic currents for our radishes to help them get started. I'm interested in these uh, electroculture rods. Now you can make your own. They're very simple to make out of 12 gauge wire. Uh, but if you don't like me, I don't have time to sit here and to make all these things. I just order mine from a uh, Hills Mill Homestead, Mr. Mickey and Ms. Kathy. They're shipping them out by the hundreds to people. So, uh, you know, if you want to get some, you might want to go ahead and get your order in now because they're backed up, I'm going to tell you. They got a lot of people ordering these things because people have realized that electroculture is not a myth. It has been around since the 1700s, and earlier than that, people have known about the use of copper and the types of metal in the soil and stuff like that. So, uh, check out Hills Mill Homestead and you will be able to uh, get a hold of Mr. Mickey there through his website and stuff at hillsmill.com and order your copper coils 
for your plants. Now there's rules. You can't just stick this thing in a pot and expect it to do miracles. There's rules that goes along with using electroculture. It has to be on the south side of the plant. It needs to be within two to three inches of the base of the plant. I mean, guys, there's it's got to be wound clockwise if you're in the northern hemisphere, counterclockwise if you're in the southern hemisphere. There's tons of rules that goes along with it. So don't get discouraged if you use it and it doesn't work like you think it's going to work. I have other electroculture setups here that I'm going to be using uh, an antenna that I'm going to be using in my carrots once they get growing I'm going to stick them in there to grow with my carrots there's lots of ways to do electroculture so check out Hills Mill Homestead Mr. Mickey alright guys y'all know we love onions and onions is one of those things you've got to buy the right variety for where you live at you can't just go buy onion seeds or onion sets and plant them and expect it to be successful because they're short day, long day, day neutral, intermediate day, whatever you want to call them. There's all these different types of onions that are made to grow in specific climates. Uh, go to Dixondale. Dixondale has a chart you can look at that tells you which one of those zones you live in. And then you can go online or you can order from Dixondale or like us, we plant our own seeds. Uh, and you can figure out which onion is best for you. Now this is the Savannah Sweet Onion from Hall's Tool. It is a short day variety. It has done exceptionally well for us here. Now so we're getting a little bit late start on our seeds because we normally plant our onions in mid-November to late November. We normally have them in by mid-September, but it's been so hot and so dry here that even in the containers the heat was just too much so we're going to go ahead now it's a we we're, actually it's october the first today uh we're going to go ahead and try to get these things in the ground in the pot and hopefully we can get them up big enough that we can transplant them last year i transplanted onions no bigger than that right there the little sets and I told Wanda, I said, they probably will never do nothing. And they made onions this big around. Done fantastic. So I'm a believer now. They don't have to be really huge. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to do this. Uh, and you don't have to worry about them being too thick. Because onions, you're going to separate them anyway. And you can... You can thin them out as they get going. Now I have done probably put enough onion seed in that pot <laughs> for a year's worth for me and Wanda out of this one variety. Now this is, you know, like I said, this is a Savannah Sweet. Now once again, we're going to do this just like we did the carrots. Let me get my bag and we're going to do it just like we did the carrots. Okay, we're going to do just like we did the other. We're going to tamp it down. Get some good soil contact. Alright, we got these tamped in. Now we're going to just lightly water them. Remember, no high pressure. Just misting, just a good little steady shower of water on them. And you got to make sure they don't dry out. That's why you don't want them out in direct sunlight. We've got two more varieties here. We've got the Texas Legend, which is a fantastic onion. I'm talking about really super sweet. And then we got the Red Creole, which is another one that's a short day variety. Both of these are short day. We're going to plant the reds in the middle and the Texas Legends on the end here. And then, guys, I'm going to call it a day because I have got a lot still left to do. And this gets my container gardening up to par and then we'll talk about that in just a minute. We have our Savannah Sweet, our Red Creole, and our Texas Legend. I'm mainly doing that, guys, because I have to go back a lot of times and look at my own videos to see what I planted where. So Savannah, Red Creole, Texas Legend. 
Now we do have the other pots here. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, four, five more here. Uh, we're not going to plant them today. Uh, it's a little bit too late for us to go plant cabbage and broccoli seeds and stuff like that. So when we see a fresh batch come into town when we're in there at the implement store or the feed stores or whatever, we'll go ahead and pick us up a few plants while we're in there and uh, we'll bring them out here and set them in these pots to kind of give us a little bit of a head start here. So it's supposed to turn cool next week and hopefully we'll be all downhill from there. So guys, I hope that today we have shown you that growing your own food doesn't have to be expensive. It can, uh, it can be very economical. Uh, the only money we have involved in this right here was the few bags of Schultz potting soil, which is will be there from now on. Uh, we had the seed purchase, which was very minimal. The mineral tubs was left over from the farm uh, feeding the cows from the minerals, so we really don't have any expense involved in that. Uh, the blood meal that we put out, uh, we had we bought that last year, so that was a little bit of an expense. Uh, the rabbit manure was a byproduct of raising the rabbits. The cow manure was a byproduct of raising the cattle. Uh, the soil was already here. Uh, basically everything else, including the corn cobs, come from the Danny corn from this past fall. Uh, or this past summer. It is fall now, this past summer. So, you know, the sand in the bottom come off of the property here. Uh, pretty much everything, uh, the blocks was left over off of a construction job. The 2 by 12s were left over after the greenhouse construction and stuff like that. We don't have a lot of expenses in what we've done because we used a lot of leftover material. Now, you could use leftover material that you have on your place and do the same thing, and it's not really that expensive. I mean, this setup right here now will last us for several years. Now, I don't change my potting soil out. The only thing I'm going to do, I will say this, that I have not done and I have not shown here, is when I go back to town, which I don't do very often, I'm going to go by a bait store, and I'm going to buy a container, they're called Red Wigglers. In the Deep South, we fish with Red Wigglers. They have like three or four different kinds of worms here. you got Red Wigglers, Night Crawlers, Jumbo Worms, there's all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to buy some little containers of Red Wigglers, and I'm going to put them in each one of these pots through here so that they live in the pot. I do this in my high tunnels and it works out fantastic. The worms turn the soil into worm castings. The plants feed on the worm castings, the cow manure, the rabbit manure, the blood meal, the corn cobs. They feed on the, the, the nutrition that's just in the soil and the worms are an added benefit. So I hope that today We've shown you how we're doing this at Deep South Homestead. Yes, the containers are up off the ground. That's because of the new gamma rays that the earth is giving off high levels of radiation right now. We're trying to get them up out of the earth and trying to make it where it's as economical and productive. Now, one thing about this, you see this height right here? I'm getting, I'm in my 60s. This is not hard on me. I can come right here if I have to weed or anything like that. Or Wanda, we can weed right here. We can we can work to work them. Uh, we have these uh, tomato cages that we have back here. Let our beans. Let's look at our beans right quick before we get out of here. Here is the tomato cages. These tomato cages that I make are made out of uh, concrete reinforcement wire. They fit right inside these pots perfectly. And if you want to know the number of squares, let me, let's just find them out here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 squares. And the 11th square, you cut the things and wrap it. And it fits inside the mineral tubs perfectly. Gives you, you can, uh, you can take these when it gets to be like, if you don't have a frost or something, you can wrap plastic around them and, uh, clip it off. It keeps the frost from, if you want to put tomato plants in it or something like that, it keeps the frost from killing your tomatoes. Uh, you can use them in the spring for that. Like these beans here are running up it now. It's a great climbing thing for cucumbers, whatever you want to do. 
I just thought I'd throw that in there right quick and let you see the results of the, uh, this is the tubs we did. This one had the 30-year-old uh, cow manure. This one is the very fresh cow manure. And uh, guys, I didn't, I don't see any difference in them, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, they're both up to the top. Both up to the top. Now we are having some problems over here with what's called leaf cutters. Uh, they're starting to, uh, you can see one of these leaves down here, how they they cut that and they roll it over and they lay a little bit of larva right there, an egg, which will actually eat the plants. Uh, we have had a little problem with that. Now we don't spray for anything, so we don't worry too much about it. We just come out here every day and we mash them and kill the little larvas. And that way it does away with them. So that's where we're at. Um, I hope that by showing you how we do things, it's helped you to understand that gardening doesn't have to be massively hard. It can be very easily done. Now, I know a lot of people don't have access to cow manure. A lot of people don't have access to rabbit manure. A lot of people don't have access to cattle tubs like we do. But I can't fix it for everybody. But what I can say is, if you can come across these things, gardening doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be hard. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.